Welcome to part 8 of the Python Basics tutorial series. We'll be going over FizzBuds, which is a very common interview question, usually used to weed out people, um, which most interview questions are, I guess. So the task is this. You have to write a program that prints the numbers from 1 to 20, but for numbers which are multiples of 3, print Fizz instead of the number, and for multiples of 5, print Buzz. For numbers which are multiples of both 3 and 5, print FizzBuzz. So there's a couple different ways to do this. I'll go over two solutions. But the first thing to note is that we'll have to make use of the modulo operator. And the way this works is, let's say you have just a simple division um, of 9 divided by 3. You know that'll be 3 remainder 0. What modulo gives you is just the remainder. So 9 modulo 3 is going to give you 0 because that's the remainder of the division. Okay. So the first method we're going to use is concatenating strings, and in Python, you can add strings together using the plus operator. Okay, and that's all you need to know for this solution, but I'll go through it right now. So we'll obviously take advantage of a for loop, and the way this works is range will first generate a1, it'll assign it to the variable num. Next, we're going to make an empty string we'll see if 1 modulo 3 is equal to 0 and this is false so we'll move on to the next if statement 1 modulo 5 is not equal to 0 so we'll move on to the next if statement and then since both these conditions above were evaluated as false this if statement happens to be evaluated as true so what we'll do is we'll add our empty string Plus, we'll typecast our num, which was assigned to 1. So it'll be empty string, um, so you can see it more clearly. It'll be something like this, where you have an empty string plus 1. And this will give you the string 1. And then at the end of this loop, it'll print out 1. OK, now for a case where uh, it'll print out fizz, let's say for the number 3. Uh, 3 modulo 3 is going to give you a remainder of 0, and that will be equal to 0. So it'll be, it'll output string in, it'll output fizz in the end. And for cases where the number is divisible by both 3 and 5, it'll output fizz buzz, as in the case of when num is equal to 15. And I'll go through that. So the way that'll work is for when range generates 15, it'll assign it to the variable num. I'll have an empty string here again, as, new, as normal. And 15 modulo 3 is going to give you 0, because remember, 15 divided by 3 is 5, remainder 0. So this condition here is going to be true. And then it'll be empty string plus fizz. So it'll just be something like this. And then we go to the next condition, and this happens to be evaluated as true because 15 modulo 5 is going to give you 0, so this condition is true. So the current string you'd have is something like okay, and then you'd have something like this where you just add buzz to it. And then so for the case of when num is equal to 15, in the end, it'll print fizzbuzz. OK? So now let's go over solution 2. And this is going to be utilizing if, elif, and else statements. It's important to note that an elif statement allows you to check multiple expressions for true and execute a block of code as soon as one of the conditions evaluates to true. OK? So. For the example of, um, let's say when num is assigned to be 15, so 15 modulo 3 will give you a remainder of 0, so this can be true. And then you'll have 15 modulo 5 will be evaluated to true, so true and true is going to give you true. Okay, 
And then so because this is evaluated as true, you go, you'll print this and you'll ignore the rest of the code below for the case when num is 15. And for example, if when num is 20, uh, 20 modulo 3 is not equal to 0, so this would be false. Um, 20 modulo 3 is not equal to 0, so this would be false. However, 20 modulo 5 is equal to 0, so we're going to print buzz, as you can see here. And that's it for this part of the tutorial. The next part of our tutorial, we'll go over how to have our code as a .py file. So sometimes people ask you for a .py file instead of a .ipython notebook or a .ipynb file. And the way you do this is either you have your notebook here and then you can download it as a .py file. Okay. And then you have your .py file from your Jupyter Notebook that was outputted from your Jupyter Notebook. Okay. And typically you only want one solution, so you clean up your file a little bit. <laughs> okay. And then let me save this to my desktop. And what I'm working with over here is Sublime. Um, you can just download it offline if you like. So I have this .py file. Yeah. Okay. So if you're on a Mac, you go to your home directory using CD and the little tilde sign. Um, typically, if you're on a Windows, you'll open up in your home directory, so you'll be okay. So I do t PWD to see what my home directory is when I just open up my terminal, and chances are yours will look similar to this. And then I'll navigate to my desktop because that's where I put my .py file. Um, you can either do Python and then the name of the file which you downloaded. In my case, I'm not sure what it is sometimes, so I'll just do ls. And I'll see that I have my Python basics fizzbuzz.py. So the way to run this as a script is to do Python and then the name of the file. If you're using Python 3, um, sometimes it works better to do Python 3 and then the name of the file. But since this will work in Python 2 even, I'll just do this, press enter, and then I'll run my example. That's it for this tutorial. In part 9, we'll go over tuples. And please subscribe, and please let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.